Hey guys, and welcome to Quality Shop. I'm really excited to be joined by not just the Spencer chairman, but also my uncle, Hava Salim, and of course, a former Spencer first team captain as well, who is uh, one of the only living people that I know to have a bench named after himself at a cricket club. Uh, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm uh, very well, Fizan. Um, yep, looking forward to to the chat. I love cricket, so always uh, always a good uh, time spent talking about cricket. Towards the the back end, like now, Alex Judy, you had that Memorial game, and I, the reason why I wanted to touch upon that is because you faced Chris Jordan, who is still playing now. Correct. And Correct. obviously, you weren't in the prime of your career, but you faced him no. and you faced other people like Oh, I think Mark Ram crashes there as well. Um, I wanted to get Correct. your 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 quick views on a, what would have been a more fun game, Memorial game, like how was it? And, and how was it facing Chris Jordan when you probably were, were th- hoping that he's going to take a couple of yards off as well? <laughs> yeah, so so it was actually, uh, it was an attitude of day at, at Spencer where, um, you know, it was an end of season kind of thing. Now, Chris Jordan was actually coming back from injury and wanted to play a lot of few games. He was at Surrey at the time. So he wanted to get into the Surrey side. So, um, so, there, there was uh, Michael Carberry played Phil De Freitas, um, uh, obviously uh, Chris Jordan, O.A. Shah, um, the keeper from Kent. So there was it was star studded, and Alex had asked me to play as well, which was a great you know great honour. Um, and it was interesting because you know we got there and it was I think end of August, early September, and I walked out to the wicket and it was rock hard, which is expensive, but it was green. And I was like, oh no, it's a green wicket. Oh dear. Okay. So, so anyway, we got stuck into bat first. Um, and away shot was three and I was four. Um, and I walked out, and Chris Jordan was bowling and he was obviously using it as a proper fitness test. And so, just to, just to let you know the situation, when I went into bat, they were still putting the stumps back in the ground after he'd cleaned away Shah up. The stumps were just everywhere. So as I walked in to take my guard, they were still trying to get the, all three stunts back in the ground because they had just been splayed everywhere. And there was Chris Jordan at the end of his run, and I was thinking, oh, great, this is uh, just what I need. I fired up Chris Jordan away. Shot, stumps had just been splayed. So <clears throat> it was fantastic. I mean, you know, he ran in. First ball he bowled, he pitched it up, and I drove him through cover, and that was a bad mistake. <laughs> Because he, he obviously he knew a way Shark could bat. He didn't know me, obviously. So it was obviously a test to see if I could bat or not. And uh, yeah, it was a mistake. So I think the next four deliveries, none of them were in my half. Um, I mean, he bowled lightning. And he's got that kind of action. And, you know, often you talk about who's the quickest bowlers you face. It's not necessarily. So I used to face Alex Tudor a lot in the nets. But I didn't. I didn't. I wasn't physically. You were scared, but not physically because he was tall and I could get under the ball. I, you know, not being too tall myself, you can duck and get under it. I mean, you know, when he got hit in the eye, that story of Alex Tudor getting hit in the eye by Brett Lee. The reason he got hit in the eye was not because the ball was really quick; it's because he ducked into it because Brett Lee skidded onto him because it's nasty. So rather than getting under the ball, you know, Alex Tudor. Uh, uh, Alex says that Alex Tudor was at the other end and said he's taken the new ball. The ball's bouncing. You can duck under it. But unfortunately, he ducked into it and he wasn't where he'd come from a Lions tour and was wearing the wrong helmet. He's borrowed at someone's helmet, so it didn't fit right. And he obviously went through and hit mm. Alex in the eye. And when I talked to Alex about that, he said, I saw the ball and I ducked because I thought it was good. And it didn't duck. It just kept coming on. And that is often the thing is I found as a shorter person, the tall bowlers, you know, Jade Dernbach tried to kill me quite a few times when we played Banstead at Spencer. Mm. He just ran in and was just literally trying to kill me. Uh, but it was okay because he was running in and he was bowling quick, but he was bouncing up and I could get out of the way. With Chris Jordan, he's not so tall. He's bustly mm. and he runs in and it skids on. So everything was around here. You know, you know, you know it's like, oh my God, and he, and he follows you because he has that. And so if you're uncomfortable is kind of what I see. Now, quick bowler who's uncomfortable is generally a little bit shorter for me. And so I was like, oh, crap, you know, this is going to hurt. Um, so eventually, you know, I, he bowled a few, you know, I was in for a few O's and then he just bowled me an absolute jaffa, which actually I'm, uh, to this day, I'm still proud that I nicked it. Um, I got a glove on it to the keeper. And I was like, well, that's pretty good. I got a glove on it because it pitched about middle and leg and took off and outside off stump. And I kind of was up here somewhere and just managed to glove it to, to Neil Baker, who who's jumped up and down for joy. <laughs> but uh, I went off. But they, 
they, they cleaned us up for 140, 150, and he cleaned us. You know, he bowled absolutely like the wind. Um, and then, you know, we had Phil De Freitas opening, who was in the twilight of his career, so it wasn't quite as quick. And so Carberry was playing for them, and he hit a couple of massive sixes straight into the car park. Oh, sorry, into the tennis courts. Absolutely huge and won in the game. Um, but, yeah, Rampakash, you know, was there as well. I mean, it was a fantastic day. Um, and it's interesting, actually, because... Something Ramprakash said to me that day, which actually changed my view and reflects modern cricket. Yusuf was with me, and my oldest son and Hamza, and they had a, they used to like kind of playing across the line. And I said to Mark, "Oh, you know, you know," I was chatting to him and said, "Oh, can you tell my lads, you know, that they should play straight?" And he said, "No." He said, "Batting now is no longer about playing straight." He goes, "If the face of the bat is hitting the ball." If the bat's angled towards leg side, there's nothing wrong with it anymore. With the new cricket, 2020, etc., if you've got the conventional drive, you're going to hit the fielders. You need to be able to manipulate the ball. So moving the face of the bat. And that was the first guy that actually said that to me. That was the first person who talked about that. Um, and I have a lot of respect for Mark Rampakash. I've seen him in the nets. Unbelievable talent. I went with Alex to watch him at... Um, the Skillful Cricket School, and he was batting against all of them, and he was unbelievable how crisply he hit the ball in the nets. Unbelievable. It was an open net, so just one matting in the middle, no nets, just the whole hall, and they were bowling wheels at him, the way he batted, and, and that really changed my perspective on cricket quite a lot, and it's obviously borne out in the years since, where we realised that obviously, you know, you have to go in and smash the ball. 2020 cricket, you can't afford to just block it for five balls, you need to get going. And that really told me at that point, you know, that cricket was moving away, you know, it was changing. And, you know, it changed actually a little bit the way I batted as well. Then I started saying, well, OK, you know, I need to start opening up and hitting that a lot more, um, you know, and it's changed the way I batted. So, so yeah, it was a great day. Great day. Um, great to see. And good to see when I see Chris Jordan now in the IPO in 2020s, I'm like, yep, I nicked off to him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's funny. Yeah. Mark Rampakash is, uh, yeah, he's, I saw him at the Surrey Championship dinner, and he's uh, he's quite a funny guy. He's, he definitely yeah. knows his stuff, doesn't he? And he he's, he was the England batting coach for quite. I think he, correct. He's still, yeah. I think he still might be. But he's him and fun. and I think Thorpe Thorpe was as yeah, well. Graham so Thorpe they've got well. a few, yeah. So they all have you know, but they're all progressive batters, right? Um, mm. But yeah, Rampakash, what a player! You know, what a player! He scored 150 for. We were on tour in Essex with school. Mm. And he played for the Oppo when he was 16, 17, and he, he got a big 100 against us. And what a player he was then as well. I mean, fantastic player. Fantastic. But in another one, maybe if he had somebody, you know, who could have helped him with, you know, the other side and, you know, the mental aspect of it, he could have been one of England's greats, right? Yeah, agreed. He's a sorry legend and probably, yeah, could have done even better for England potentially yeah. as well. Um, yeah. Play some Ashes as well. So I'm sure he, he'll uh, still be happy with yeah. that, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you so much um Howell, for your insight as well i really appreciate it it was okay. definitely insightful there's definitely some things in there that i haven't heard before as well so it's fantastic to get uh, a bit of insight and uh, i'm sure a lot of other viewers will definitely have enjoyed it because i know i have even for things i've heard before so it's fantastic to get that outlook okay. and, yeah um, thank you very much thank thank you thanks everyone. take care